Good evening, everybody. Welcome to prayer meeting tonight. Hope all of your Republican candidates won yesterday in the primary. And uh, I went 50-50. The guy I voted for in the state house didn't make it, but almost did. Uh, but anyhow, that's politics. That's got nothing to do with tonight. You know, we could increase our Wednesday night attendance if we put out on the sign, coldest air conditioning in York County. People would come in in droves just to get out of that heat out there. Uh, it was hot today. Driving home from work today, the little uh, temperature on my dashboard said 100. And that was with a 90 mile an hour wind. So uh, it's still very hot out there. So welcome to a cool place. Let's take our hymn book and turn to number 262, if you would. 262, Footsteps of Jesus. And let's stand as we sing the first, third, and the fourth. First, third, and fourth verses, number 262, Footsteps of Jesus. talking about the oldest air conditioning. Does anybody else remember seeing, was it in movie theaters that used to put that up, air conditioned, that I guess coaxed people to come in? Uh, I'm probably showing my age, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but I am grateful for air conditioning now, aren't you? Uh, I think it's been 50 years since I've been in a movie theater. It's uh, the sound of music. I saw the sound of music when it, boy, how old am I? Uh, Betty Ann sent me a picture of the Jeep Dash. Her thermometer said 119. Now, I don't think she was driving. I think probably she'd just gotten into it, I'm guessing, and it's got that black cloth top on it, but, uh, but it, it was hot. Um, it, listen, it was hot. Jerry said it's so hot, it's reminding him of our trip to Nicaragua, and, uh, and he's not wrong. You know what made that trip to Nicaragua worse? They put us in a nice sort of a missions compound for us to stay. We each had a room. And um, we had a fan, and Jerry reminds me often his fan didn't really work, but there was an air conditioner in both of the rooms. But you had to pay extra to get the air conditioning, and the church that hosted us didn't see any need in spending that money. So uh, Jerry just sat and stared at that air conditioner, wondering what it would be like if, if. But uh, it was good. It was good. The Lord blessed. We had a good week in spite of all that, didn't we? I might make him. <laughs> Next time. I actually tried to get them to, to turn the air. I said, I'll pay. And they said, we don't really know how to do that now because the bookkeeper is not here to do the thing. And it made me hot just listening to explain it, so we just let it be, but uh, it was good. A um, number of prayer requests tonight um, that we want to be mindful of. We've been praying for the Baskins for some time, Tommy and Rita both. Um, since COVID, they've not been able to attend, but they're, they're dealing with a number of things. Tommy, of course, has some physical needs. 
And from time to time now, he's beginning to get confused and has some needs along that way as well. So let's continue to be in prayer for them. His mother, Vivian West, uh, has been admitted to the hospital. She's got some fluid levels and, and uh, chemical levels that are out of balance, and they're working at getting that fixed. Um, so please be in prayer for, for Vivian. And that, of course, it concerns Tommy as well. And so we want to be in prayer for him and uh, pray for Rita as she cares for Tommy and as she cares for herself. She also has an unspoken request. And um, from time to time, somebody will mention an unspoken request. And some burdens of heart are too close to almost voice out loud, right? And you may not want to say it in an open prayer meeting or that sort of thing, but uh, the Lord knows those things and he knows those needs. And so um, I have a couple of those unspoken requests tonight. Maybe you do too. How many would say, yep, there's something I just, the Lord knows what it is and with no sense in getting into the details. And so uh, let's put that on our prayer list to remember one another in these unspoken needs uh, that all of us have. And sometimes they're the most urgent, aren't they? And we just don't have the words to put to them or don't know how to share them um, sometimes in a, in a context like this. Uh, Bill Dillon is our missionary to Israel. Uh, his mother-in-law had a stroke, and so they came back from the road to tend to her. And uh, she passed away as a result of that stroke. So we want to be in prayer for Karen Dillon. That was her mom. Uh, and the Dillons now, as, as they deal with this, understand Tony Boyd, uh, Jared's dad, is about to have surgery, so we want to be in prayer for him. Uh, Michelle Heckeman's dad, the Heckemans used to attend here. Um, most of you know them. Some of you will not, but they're a family that was here for many, many years. Her father has cancer. Um, they've discovered it now in his pancreas, and so we know the severity of that. And even more importantly, there's no evidence that her dad is saved, so let's pray for him. His name is Gary Neathammer. Um, so just put Gary N. The Lord knows who that is, and uh, you'll have the spelling of his name and all of that in the prayer list on Sunday. Uh, Jason Lowe, who is our missionary of the Bahamas, Pastor, I don't know if you saw his letter or not, but the pastor can, uh, can certainly relate. He's just finished two surgeries dealing with kidney stones, and uh, everything seems to have gone well, but now he's in that procedure of, of getting over that and getting back to his normal routine, so let's pray for Jason uh, Lowe, um, serving the Lord as a missionary. Gigi had her first radiation treatment yesterday. And uh, we've not gotten a report back from her yet, but uh, we want to continue to be in prayer for Gigi. Uh, we've talked for some time about Joyce Mellum and the blood issue. And um, any word on how, how that's going? Nothing? Yeah, okay, so let's continue to pray there. I know they were waiting to get a green light from insurance and that sort of thing to move forward with that. So let's continue to pray that that can be dealt with quickly. Uh, Jimmy Shaver, likewise, waiting for... Um, his test results and a prognosis now on his issues in the liver. Uh, Linda Brooks um, is not well on Sunday. She's been dealing with diverticulitis and some other issues, so we want to continue to pray for Linda. Uh, Tommy Nance is under hospice care, and as you remember, the cancer has moved to his brain, and so he's, he's uh, suffering um, a number of issues as a result of that and certainly needs our prayers. Uh, JT was dealing with another blockage, even though they had just cleared up both legs. And he's in a good amount of pain and, and going back to the doctor to try to figure out what's happening there. So we want to be in prayer for JT. Um, Rick Boatwright has been on our list for some time. Carol and, of course, Kitty, who are dealing with a, a very similar kind of thing for Paula Sprague and some of these ongoing requests. So uh, let's be sure that we remember them. Remember those who cannot get out to services tonight. Uh, we have a number of shut-ins who would love to be here but can't. Uh, because of various situations and circumstances. Let's remember those that are traveling. Uh, I see the Rodriguez family made it back from the West, and uh, that's good. We're glad to see you back again. Uh, what else do we need to pray for tonight? What other requests do you have? Okay. Sarah with stomach cancer has asked that we pray for her. Sue?
uh, Becky samples with the elevated liver enzyme level. They'll be doing an ultrasound on that uh, next week. And for the Clark's daughter, Elizabeth, uh, it's a difficult situation there, but they've not heard from her in some time, so we want to pray for her safety. Let's pray that she'll make contact with mom and dad at some point. And as always, we pray for grace, right? And um, look to the Lord to do what we can't do um, in everyone's heart. Joey, did I see your hand? Yes. Yeah, thank you for reminding us of that. We had mentioned him in a, a letter that we sent out, but uh, he had fallen off our list here. Tom Van Sant. This is the son of Bob and Judy Van Sant, missionaries, um, was involved in a serious motorcycle accident, and his recovery will be long, so let's pray for him. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, let's continue to pray for Maria. She's been, and we'd love to see her again and to be able to share the gospel with her. Cindy. So we're going to pray for you in steps. Step one, we're going to pray you get well. And step two, we'll pray for that surgery. Uh, Cindy Taylor needs gallbladder surgery, but she's got to be healthy before she can get surgery. Healthy in other ways, obviously. Yeah. Anyone else? All right, I'm going to ask Gabe the Traveler if he'll come and start our time of prayer tonight, uh, asking the Lord's blessing on, uh, on these requests. And then uh, Jeff Cornwell, if you'd come when he finishes, and then I'll close our time. <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you for this moment that we can be in your house, gather together and worship you freely, dear Lord. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy in this nation and for this moment of opportunity that you allow us to come boldly before you and bring these prayers, supplications, and requests. We ask for these with illness, diseases, cancer, cancer treatments, upcoming surgeries, dear Lord many on these lists and many who we've mentioned. We ask that you be with them in each of their situations, that you put your hand of blessing upon them, dear Lord, and that your will be done in each of these, but most importantly, let your light shine through um, all of these folks with these illnesses and, and their families. We ask for these unspoken requests. There were many hands raised this evening, dear Lord, mine was among them. We ask that you to show your will in these situations, put your hand of blessing upon us and help us with the decisions that need to be made or the doors that need to be opened or substance that needs to be provided, dear Lord. We just ask that you answer all of these unspoken requests in, in your will and in your way, which only you know. We ask you for our missionaries this evening, dear Lord, especially be with the, the ones in the Bahamas and the Van Sant family, dear Lord, with their Son, in this accident, we ask that you put your hand of blessing and, and protection and healing upon them and be with them and comfort them through these situations and provide for their needs um, going through this, this difficult time. We thank you for being able to gather here again tonight. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for salvation, Lord, and your love for us and the sacrifice you made for us on the cross, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the, the needs that were mentioned here tonight, those that are sick, Lord, and facing surgery, Lord. I pray especially a blessing on those that are suffering with cancer and other serious illnesses, Lord. I pray, God, that you would meet those needs, Lord, that you would provide healing where, where it's your will, Father, and grace where or not, Lord. We just pray that you would help those going through these things, these situations, suffering different family situations, Lord. We just pray that you'd be with um, our family here, Lord. Meet their needs, Lord. Father, be there as a comfort and, and guide, Lord, for, for those that are suffering and hurting, Lord. We just pray that you'd make your presence known, Lord. We pray, God, that you'd give give grace and healing, Lord, to all those needs that were mentioned tonight, those that are having surgery and those that are just facing various problems, Lord, for the unspoken request, Lord. You know what they are, God, and we pray that you'd meet those needs, Lord, according to your will, Father. And we thank you that you take you care about us and you listen to our needs, Lord. We pray, God, for our military tonight, Lord, that are deployed in various harm's way around the world, Lord, and those that are just away from home. We pray, God, that you'd bless them, Lord. We pray that you'd use their time away, Lord, to help reach, Lord, and guide and build these men, Lord. We pray that you'd give them comfort in, in whatever difficult circumstances we'll be in, and also the women, Lord. They're both out there now, Lord. And God, we just pray that you'd be with them, provide them safety, Lord, for our law enforcement and police, firefighters, EMS that are out working, God, we pray your hand of protection on them, Lord, that each one will be able to come home to their family, Lord, for the missionaries serving on the field, the same thing, it's a dangerous world, Father, and we pray, God, that you just protect these missionaries, God, we pray that you give them fruit for their labor, Lord, meet their needs, Lord, we pray that they would see, ultimately see souls saved, Father, in the field, for our pastor, Lord, we pray that you would Bless him and the other church staff here, Lord. Meet their needs. Keep your hand of protection on them, Lord. Lead them and guide them, Lord, according to your will as they, as they lead us, Father. We pray, God, for the other ministries around the church, Lord. We just pray that you would bless each and every one, Lord. We pray, God, for that we would see souls saved, Lord, and, and fruit for the labor of all the teachers that are working, Lord. We thank you for all that you've given the church, Lord, the way you've blessed this church above and beyond anything we could ask, Father. We pray that you'd protect it, Lord, and, and help us, Lord, to, to serve and do what we need to do as members, Father. We give you thanks for all things, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, tonight we have so much to be grateful for. We're thankful for this place where we live that offers us a freedom uh, to meet, to be able to share our faith with others, to be able to live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We're grateful that somebody once shared with us the good news of the gospel. We're grateful for your Holy Spirit who helped us to understand it, to see our need, and to convict us of our sin and to draw you, us to you. We're thankful for the salvation that we have in Christ and for the Holy Spirit that lives within us. We're grateful for your word and the fact that we can find our spiritual nourishment in it day after day. Thank you, Lord, for our families. We thank you for our our church, our church family. We're grateful for our pastor and his leadership here. We're thankful, Lord, that you've given us life today and strength enough to be in this room. We're grateful for those who, even though they're struggling in one way or another, some are facing physical needs, some are dealing with difficult family issues, some are dealing with difficult financial issues, but, Lord, you've brought us this far. And so for that, we're grateful. Thank you for the privilege of being here tonight to hear your word, and thank you for the great privilege that we have of bringing our requests and our burdens to you. We thank you, Lord, that you've not left us alone, uh, but that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so for all of these things, Father, we give you praise. And Lord, tonight again, we ask that we might continue to see you work another day today and then again tomorrow. We pray for your blessings on our ministries. We pray for your blessing on our families. We pray for your blessing on our lives because, Lord, we readily admit that Without you, we can do nothing. And so tonight again, we ask that you might undertake in behalf of all of these names that have been mentioned. I ask, Father, that you give pastor wisdom and grace as he leads us. I pray for our Sunday school teachers and children's workers and deacons and uh, those that are involved in the physical care of this building and reaching out to others by knocking on doors and driving buses. Lord, will you give them fruit for their labor? 
Father, we pray that everything that's done at Bible Baptist, whether it's seen or unseen, whether it's some great ministry in the eyes of men or at some quiet place where we serve in the dark, that all of it would bring glory to your name. Lord, your words told us that if we exalt the name of our Savior, that he'll draw men to himself. And so we claim that promise tonight. We preach your word here, believing that it's all that we need. And so we believe it to be sufficient. And we ask, Father, that you'd work through it tonight. And then this coming Sunday, we pray for Brother Mullinex as he comes, that you'd give him safety as he journeys here, and that you'd give him a power and liberty and openness as he preaches, and that our hearts would be touched. Draw souls to, your, to yourself. We pray that we might see the lost here on Sunday and some come to Christ. So for all of this, we look forward to what you're going to do, and we're going to thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 266, if you need it, this is just that little chorus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Let's stand together and just sing this song of testimony and thanks to the Lord tonight. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me my great salvation so rich and free. Thank you. You may be seated. News headlines, Buffalo, there were 10 killed, there were 13 shot, two of those were white people, which I haven't heard one mention about that, they just keep talking about it being a white young man that shot black people, but uh, one of those was a retired police officer who was a security, who shot the young man several times but he had a bulletproof vest on and he was using a handgun and so it didn't knock him down or stop him. Iran, Christian jail for 10 years for holding a church service and uh, getting caught. 25-year-old girl, Nigerian student, beaten to death by her fellow classmates for posting something negative about Islam. In the Nigerian Borno state, Islamic militants killed eight Christians, and some of those were children. The Biden administration has backed the transgender uh, group, including causing the military to pay for transgender surgeries for any troops that want to become transgender and um, teaching it in the public school. Some states have um, gotten ahead of him and, and passed so that they can't teach it to the children in third grade and down. And, um, but what we haven't thought about is that the Biden administration is also forcing employers to pay for insurance that will cover transgender surgeries and that sort of thing and many of these companies have some principles and Christian ethics that do not want to be involved in that and there's been a state that has Supreme Court in a state has blocked it in their state for now until it goes through the proper channels also, with the little bit of rumors that have been speculated that they might overturn Roe v. Wade, I remind you, if they overturn Roe v. Wade, most likely all that will mean is it will go back to being up to the state to decide whether abortion is legal or not in their state. But the LGBTQ community is spreading lies and hate to stir opposition to Roe v. Wade being overturned, saying that they're going to come for us next if they overturn Roe v. Wade. And they're picketing, which they have the right to do, but they're doing violent things, including blowing up 
um, crisis pregnancy centers and things of that nature that uh, you won't get much news coverage about that. So it's a tough day that we live in, all the changes of the world and all that's evil and wicked and wrong, Satan is behind all of it. So pray for your friends and co-workers and people that uh, we can be a good witness and testimony to them. Hebrews chapter 11 in your Bibles, we're looking at uh, faith, hope, and charity from 1 Corinthians 13. Tonight we pick up faith. Let us lay aside every weight, the sin which does so easily beset us and run with patience the Christian life in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. In chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, of them that diligently seek him. Now we're looking at the race of the Christian life, and it's a race that's to be run by faith in chapter 12 as this chapter on faith continues into chapter 12. We're foreseeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. So Christ, the finisher of our faith, we've got to keep our eye on him, our focus on him as we seek to live by faith. Um. Laying aside sin hinders us in the race, and the weights, laying aside weights. You know, there's things in our life that uh, by themselves may not be a sin, but if we let them get ahead of the Lord or we let them keep us from serving the Lord as we should, then they are a weight that hinder us, and we need to lay those things aside by faith. We see the types of faith in the Word um, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. The Bible tells us that uh, there is saving faith. Ephesians 2 and verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So faith that saves, faith is belief. Faith is to be convinced that God's word is true, and what God says can be trusted. So we're looking at types of faith, saving faith. And then there is living faith, daily living for the Lord. There is the faith, which is the embodiment of all that we believe in the Bible, called the faith. There is uh, dying faith, that we will uh, be faithful unto death, even as Jesus died the death of the cross. And Jude warns us we must earnestly contend for the faith that's been delivered to the saints. 
that I have faith to be convinced to believe. The book of Hebrews defines it for us, and then uh, it gives us a list of all these people of faith who did great works for God in Hebrews chapter 11. It begins by saying the elders by faith obtained a good report of the Lord. Um, faith, as we understand God's word, describes the creation. And it's through faith that we understand these things are so, that we believe it's exactly as the Bible says. God doesn't give us all of the scientific proofs, and even if he did, it wouldn't prove the people that are determined to be ignorant of facts. And so it's a matter of faith that we must believe. I would say to you that those who hold the theory of evolution of the species have a faith also. They trust by faith. They have no more proof than we have. You can't have absolute proof because it's not ongoing. It's not happening right now. But we got a lot of questions to them that they have no answers for. And that is, if uh, man evolved from animals, then where are the half man and half animal and all that sort of thing? And they can't give you answers for that except to say, well, it's so far back, millions and millions and millions of years. They just keep adding years to, as if that gives some kind of proof where it doesn't. These people in the Old Testament by faith, like Abel, offered the proper sacrifice. God had taught Adam and Eve when he killed the animals and made skins for them to cover their nakedness. He taught them of sacrifice and what he required of them, and they taught their children. Abel offered the proper sacrifice, an animal, the blood sacrifice unto God. But his brother Cain offered the works of his hands, and that's the battle that Satan continues to raise up among religious people in the world today. We serve God by faith, but many believe that you must have works in order to be saved. And you can't be saved by works, you must be saved by faith. We believe if you have biblical faith to be saved, you will have works, because that will be evident of your Christian life. Enoch walked with God and pleased God. By faith, these men of God and Sarah, the ladies that's mentioned here, um, they worshipped God by faith. They walked with God by faith. They worked for God by faith. And they are witnesses to us by faith that they kept the truth and that we should continue to do the same. By faith, Noah built the ark. Noah responded in faith and fear because of the judgment that was going to come. He believed God would destroy the world with flood. And so he built the ark to the saving of his household. Abraham followed God without a map and compass. He didn't know where he was going. He was just following day by day. And you'll remember the story of Abraham, how that when he came to places where he stopped, he would make an altar out of stones, and he would make a sacrifice to God, or he would pour oil on the rocks and, and make an altar unto the Lord. And he uh, dug wells of water to make a, a supply for the herds, and Abraham followed the Lord even though he didn't have the answers of where he was going. Sarah believed God and received a child in her old age. If I'm not mistaken, I think Abraham was 90 and Sarah was 75 when Isaac was born. And uh, I've heard some folks that are older having children before, you know, like uh, we had one that was, you know, our last one was a little later. Uh, Becca's 11 years younger than her sister. And uh, we didn't know we were going to have any more children, but it uh, wasn't anything like Abraham. Our daughter, Nikki, she went on a diet, lost 50 pounds, and got pregnant when she was 40 years old. And, uh, but 
40 is, uh, is not impossible at all. And, uh, but Sarah and Abraham had reached the age that their bodies were not physically able except for the fact that God touched them and miraculously gave them a child in their old age. It was an answer to their faith. Moses made a choice by faith to be identified with the people of God. Moses was considered the adopted child of the princess, the daughter of Pharaoh over all of Egypt. And... Moses could have lived in the palace of the Pharaoh and enjoyed life as the son of his daughter, but he chose to leave that and be identified with the Hebrew people, his own people, and they were enslaved to Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and they had to make brick and build the pyramids and all these kind of things. And it cost him something to be identified with the people of God. Separation has a cost. Separation requires faith because it is not always conducive with uh, the attitude of others. But Moses made that choice and paid the price. And then after a period of time, God used him to lead the nation to go toward the promised land that he had promised Abraham to give unto him. Many Old Testament believers did a great work by faith. All of the judges and David and Samuel, they all had a testimony of faith as they fought wars and dealt with hardship and difficulty, and faith was their motivation that kept them going. Um, all of them are said to have died without receiving the promise. They lived in faith and served in faith and went through hardship in faith, believing the day would come where they would be in the promised land, believing the day would come where they would have the Redeemer, believing the day would come when they would go to heaven or go to the kingdom, and they understood none of these things because they died before these things took place. But they died in faith, serving God and believing them. Now, tw chapter 12, as I mentioned, continues the work done by faith and the focus of Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Several in this church have... Uh, served the Lord by faith and given up careers, given up homes, given up material possessions to train, to be in the ministry, to pay their own way through college and things of that nature. They separated and paid a price to serve the Lord, and it's cost them something. And most of the time when we start something like that, we do not know all the price involved of what God may ask of us when we surrender willing to serve him. It may be that you don't get to do the things you thought you would or want to do, or it may not be in the place that you thought it would be. I heard Bob Hughes preach from the Philippines. He came back from the Philippines. He already had cancer. He preached at Baptist Bible College when I was a young student there. And his heart for the Filipino people and his heart for missions and his heart for the Lord, he preached. And if God would have let me, I would have surrendered my life to be a missionary at that moment. It stayed on my mind for a long time. I finally came to a, a peace about it that God was not allowing me to be a missionary, but God would allow me to be a pastor and to give to missions and teach the church to be a mission-giving church. And so that's what we have done. But it doesn't always work out the way we want it to. Many men have gone into ministry to be pastors, and that did not happen for them. Or they had a change that came about. 
and they have uh, paid a price to serve the Lord. Whatever you do in life for a, a wage to support your family, we're all called to be full-time Christians in serving the Lord. And that's, that's people that can be involved in the church, and teach a class, and visit and invite people to church, and become a soul winner, and and can effectively be used of the Lord to help do the work of the ministry, regardless of what you do in a, in a full-time basis. Um, some of our folks went through college and worked for BBN Radio, and uh, that's a, a ministry. That's a type of ministry. And it, it, if they worked in a secular radio or TV, they might make, twice or more what they make working in a Christian ministry that does that. But they want to work in a Christian environment, and so they want to serve the Lord, and, and they're willing to do that. And so they've, by faith, followed the Lord, who's the author and finisher of our faith. They've laid aside weights and the sin that could beset them and they run with patience the race that is set before them as we're all called to do. Sometimes a parent decides that they want to homeschool their children rather than send them to the public school. Call it public, I think more of it as government schools because government controls what is taught. And the government schools, if a parent decides to homeschool, more than likely the mom is going to probably not be able to work a job outside the home. She's going to have to stay home and homeschool the children. And that doesn't mean dad gets off scot-free. He's probably going to have to help when he comes home to help the kids some too and, uh, and be involved in the homeschooling effort. And it takes a, a commitment on the whole part of the whole family, not just one person. And they make less money, they give up a career, uh, they don't build the retirement that they would have had, all so they can educate their children and have some control in what they're being taught rather than in the government school system. So faith is involved in all these things. Look at uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. We are not only saved by faith, we're justified by faith. Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So justification comes by faith. Salvation comes by faith. Righteousness comes by faith. Uh, the faith that we are saved and justified by reveals the righteousness of God in us. In Romans 1.17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. So faith is important. Romans speaks much about righteousness in chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Um, chapter 5 and verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So despite the clear teaching of Scripture, there are still many religious groups, church denominations, that teach works is required either to be saved or to be justified. Martin Luther was a Catholic priest, and he was studying the scriptures and came to believe by faith that he was saved and justified by faith alone, not by the rituals of the Catholic Church. He wrote a thesis and nailed it to the door at Wittenberg, was expelled from the Roman Catholic Church for his beliefs, 
And as a German theologian, Martin Luther influenced people at the time, along with numerous others, the Protestant Reformation took place, where people pulled out of the Roman Catholic Church protesting its teaching. Luther was also instrumental in encouraging men who had aptitude and education to translate the scriptures in the language of their people. And so he taught theology and he encouraged others in the printing of Bibles and we still benefit from that today. God used them at a time when there was the danger of those teachings being lost to the common man. And it's important that we don't forget where it came from. We don't forget the price that was paid. Just like God gave us Hebrews chapter 11 so that we would not forget all those who paid a price by faith to do what he has called us to do. Faith, uh, the faith is the expression of the standing for the whole system of the truth of God's word that we believe. The Bible says in Acts 6, 7, that a large number of priests became obedient to the faith, meaning they got saved. They came out of the Jewish priesthood under law and recognized that you could be saved by faith in Christ, and so the whole embodiment of the teaching is the faith. False tr teachers tried to turn men from the faith, and Paul was one who was said to have tried to destroy the faith, and now they see him teaching and preaching the faith which he once sought to destroy, Galatians 1.23. There's a oneness of the faith among churches that believe the Bible. And um, we should be grounded in the faith of the Word of God so that we are not carried about with every wind of teaching that comes along. And every few years there's some new religious movement that takes place, some new teaching, some new tele-evangelist that's the best thing sent sliced bread, you know, that comes along, and he's got all the answers, and everybody needs to follow him. And half the time, people like that end up getting ex exposed at some point that uh, they weren't genuine in the faith to begin with. But it's important that we get grounded in the faith so that we follow the Word of God, not men. Men can be deceived by Satan, but the Word of God is not deceptive. Now, false teachers try to turn men from the faith, and so it's imperative that we are grounded in the faith and that we, uh, like Paul and Barnabas and, and the teams of men, Silas and Timothy and all of them that carried the word of God throughout their world of that day and spread the gospel through the nations, that we continue to defend the faith and preserve the faith for the next generation that's coming along. There ought to be a oneness in the churches that have true faith, that we can love each other as brothers and sisters. We may have minor differences, but as long as they are genuine Bible-believing people, then they are a part of the faith. There's warning about turning away from the faith. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 and 2, that in the latter days some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And it's sad when that happens. Paul thanked God for the living faith of the churches where he had been and preached and baptized and taught in, um, in, in um, Corinthians. He was there for 18 months in Ephesus for three years. And he could write back to them and celebrate their faith. He thanked God for the corporate faith of the churches. In Romans 1.8, he thanked God for their faith that was spoken of throughout the world. And uh, would God that, you know, our 
tight churches that our faith would be spoken of throughout the world. Brother Bob mentioned Bill Dillon. Bill wrote in his letter that uh, he was in Israel just recently on a survey trip, and he, um, Bill Dillon taught Hebrew at Ambassador Baptist College, and he reads and writes and speaks Hebrew, and he studied modern Hebrew of today to be uh, uh, good in his language and speaking to the people of Israel. And so they were over there for a survey time, and he gave a gospel tract to a lady in a store that he has written. And she looked at that tract. She said, I know who you are. He said, you do? He said, who do you think I am? She said, you're one of those Baptists. He said, she couldn't quite pronounce it right, but he felt honored that they could identify a Christian as a Baptist rather than so many years the people of Israel identified all Christians as Catholics. And uh, so now they're understanding that there's some people that have truth that are not associated with those people that they thought were the Christian example. Living faith. Corporate faith. This kind of faith is observable. Both the Rome and Thessalonica, Paul wrote about how their faith had been spoken of throughout, how it had been demonstrated throughout their whole region, and they had sounded out the word of the Lord in these places. This kind of faith grows, and it should. And if our faith is genuine, it should have a growth by staying faithful in the church, getting equipped and prepared for dying faith. Back in Hebrews 11 and verse 35, women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. Verse 37, Hebrews chapter 11, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. These died in faith, waiting for the promise that the Lord would give them. Jude warns that we must earnestly contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And we're to draw near in full assurance of faith, the Bible says. We have uh, been granted the blessings of the Lord through our faith. Hebrews 10.22 says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith. And let us hold the, the hope because he's promised that to those who are faithful. Let us encourage one another to be faithful, to uh, love, and to have good deeds. And these are marks of maturity, marks of faith. Faith is absolute confidence that what God's word says is truth. God's word is sure and we have confidence in it and this causes us to persevere and not pull back or withdraw. You say, well, how do you prove faith? Well, the Lord used to talk with Nicodemus about the wind. You can't see the wind, but you can see the effects of the wind. You can't see faith, but you can see the effects of faith. You can't see gravity, but you sure know it holds you down. Just try to jump. If you weigh as much as I do, you won't get very high off the floor, I promise you. And if you want to get in an airplane and get out of Earth's gravity, it's going to take a tremendous amount of force to get you that far to get outside the Earth's gravity. We can't see ultraviolet light, but we sure know it's up there and we know it damages us and we have to wear glasses and get cataract surgeries and all that kind of thing. We can't see radio waves. We can turn the radio on and hear 
and there's no wires connecting it to anything, maybe an antenna inside the windshield is picking that up, but it's coming from the waves. Microwaves are the same. These are unseen things that God created to make life better for us. And Bible faith may not be visible, but the effects of it can be visible when we live for God by faith. Thank you for being here tonight. Father, I pray your blessings upon your church. I ask you to bless those at home watching tonight. Let them know that they are missed. And we pray for all with physical needs. Lord, bless these people as they travel home. Keep them safe. Provide their needs. Encourage them in the faith to be strong and stand firm in the faith to be a good witness for Christ and a testimony of how we are to live. And we ask your blessings in the name of Jesus our Savior. Amen.